No Rissar is here? Is Council Member Rissar here yet? No? Okay, well, we have a quorum and we'll get started. Um, we do have cards on two items, but I believe on item three we're going to be referring to planning departments. So I understand that being the case. That, um, then Mr. Christopher Kuntz will not need to speak, but we'll go through the items. Um, number two, we can adapt. We can adopt number two. Uh, and hopefully we'll move to full count so that uh, the work that is being done there will coincide with the work being done in the bike plan. So that would be good. Number three, we're going to refer to the planning department. Number four will be consent. See no cards. Number five, consent. Number six will continue to perm to January 26th and hopefully council on February 10th. So I'll be continued. Item number seven will continue to plan to January 26th as well. Item number eight will continue to January 12th. And then item nine, I don't see the director here. That would have been the report. Thank you, Mr. LeBron. And so, Councilmember, so most of the items two through nine are either being consent or they're being continued. And with your second, we can move those. Well, need your mic. One minute. going to hear on number one. So this is number one to have a second on those actions. Second. Thank you, sir. So it takes us to number one. And um, before we get started, I just want to remind you if you can give us your name and address. And uh, six inches. The name and address. And uh, most of you might have worked on a really nice letter or a statement. If you could just focus on the statement and you have two minutes. So uh, sometimes people get into their letter and don't get to the point. So I just want to make sure you're aware of the two minute. The clock is right next to Patrice, our city clerk. And uh, we can move on on this item. And uh, Roberto, you want to give us the reading on this? Uh, yes, Councilman. Item one is a motion. Uh, it's your motion, seconded by Councilman Weston. It's requesting Rodino Associates to report or to present a report that they prepare entitled Study of the Grocery Industry Impacts on the LA Economy. And I think you're also requesting Planning Department to weigh in on land use regulations. Yes, I understand we have a panel of, uh, of speakers. And again, this committee focuses on land use issues. So I look forward to hearing from you. And um, do we have a presentation from the group that wanted to? We have Reverend Norman Johnson, I believe, uh, and Mr. William Campbell and Cheryl Resnick. And that would be the impacts on industry impacts of the community. If you'd like to come on up and give us your presentation, you can hold the clock on this. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, the Honorable Chair, members of the committee, members of the council, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the Reverend William Monroe Campbell, senior pastor of the Mount Gilead Missionary Baptist Church. We're located at 9201 South Normandy Avenue uh, uh, here in Los Angeles, 90044. 
Uh, I'm also a native of Los Angeles. I was born in the uh, former Hoover Street Hospital that was located at 51st and Hoover. It's now the parking lot of the Carver Missionary Baptist Church. Uh, growing up in Los Angeles, I've had opportunity to see supermarkets come and go. Uh, I was here when a Safeway located at uh, Imperial in Wilmington. I was here when this community had the ShopRite market system. I was here when we had the uh, super, the Safeway opened at uh, Adams and, and Central. Uh, I, I became pastor of Mount Gilead some eight years ago, and uh, at the time I became pastor, there was a Vons and a Ralph uh, alternately at the north and, and south um, east corners of Imperial and Crenshaw. All of those have gone. Uh, as a consequence of that, uh, what happens is that the community is impacted in terms of the availability of uh, fresh foods, uh, produce, and commodities. Some of you may remember uh, um some design many years ago uh, when Silas King, who was uh, a general of the national, state national guard and and the uh, and the head of Corps, uh, brought a presentation that reflected the fact that the rafts that was then located at Vernon and uh, Figueroa had uh, uh, stale foods. Uh, the the meats were green, uh, and and the community just was poorly served. And, and I, I describe all of that to talk about the knowledge of insufficiency in terms of providing uh, groceries and uh, uh, services within our community. And, and so I, I, I come both as a native, I come as a pastor uh, in the community to lift before the council the need for you to give some leadership in terms of addressing this malady. It impacts us in terms of health, because obviously if you, you don't have fresh food, you end up eating things that are not in your best interest. It impacts us economically. Um, the supermarkets provide jobs. My father worked in, as a street sweeper for the city of Los Angeles in the produce area before it moved east of Central. It was west of uh, Central, between 9th and San, G uh, 9th, San G and San Pedro and Olympic. Uh, and so I had an opportunity to see us so early in the morning the folks would come in and, and often uh, because he swept they would give him whatever was excess and we would get it. But the reality is that too often in our communities the quality of uh, food availability is limited because of the limitation of major uh, markets in our community. And then correspondingly, this also has to do with economics. They're employers, so the lack of jobs. So I just come, again, as a native, as a pastor, as a person concerned about the best interests of our city to urge your actions toward using the kind of influence and the kinds of uh, determinations you can make as a city council to incentivize and enhance the presence of supermarkets that will provide quality service in our community. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Thank you very much, and I do want to apologize. I know there's a group, big group that came uh, last week, maybe the week before, but because of council, we went to about 5 o'clock or 5.30 that day, we had to move this over. So I appreciate your presence, and, uh, and it's good to see you back in City Hall. I, I just want to comment, Pastor. I'm a native of this city also. And uh, in my earlier years, I worked at LAPD 77th Street, uh, Newton Division in the area of South Los Angeles. And, and I agree with you. They haven't had quality markets for many, many years. They have little mom-and-pop stores. They don't carry what you would consider food to prepare for a large meal. Uh, so you're right on target with that. So I'm well aware, since I still work LAPD as a reserve in that community, they have some but not enough for the, for the population. And what we need to do is change that. I know that Councilmember Perry was moving forward with an ordinance on fast food restaurants to restrict fast food restaurants. The fact of the matter is you're either going to eat fast food or whatever you can get or you're going to starve. And what we need to do is establish a different priority because they will put those other uh, markets, whether it be the big chains or the independents, in other areas of the city, but somehow they've neglected that certain section of Los Angeles, and that needs to change. So I commend you on your, uh, your pastoral outreach to try and make a change to make it better for the folks. Thank you so you're much, welcome. sir. 
And if I may, uh, we do have uh, quite a few speakers on panel presentation, and to make sure we get to everybody, we'd like to limit them to three minutes, if that's okay, because we have quite a few. So, Reverend, welcome, sir. Yes, thank you. Uh, he's Campbell. I'm Johnson. I'm sorry. Uh, and want to say uh, good afternoon, and I am Reverend Norman Johnson, pastor of First to Christian Fellowship uh, Baptist Church in Los Angeles. The address is 1555 West 108th Street. And I come to you today as co-chair of the Blue Ribbon Commission on LA's uh, Grocery Industry and Community Health, formed in 2007 to examine conditions in one of the largest uh, uh, industries, uh, one of the most important industries in the city. I appreciate the comments from Councilman Zion. So I want to get to the part of the what I need to say that advances uh, the conversation from uh, 2007 with what the, the work of Councilman Wesson and Han, council persons Wesson, Han, and Gersetti, also. Um, uh, the results of what came out from the uh, Redino Associates uh, study. Uh, we also acknowledge what uh, council persons uh, Perry and Parks have done, but we recognize that most grocers can constantly expand in affluent communities without the need for financial incentives. But we cannot pretend that they will be willing to take a perceived risk without significant subsidies from the city and its redevelopment agency. The recent openings of Ralph's Fresh Fair in downtown and Superior Markets in South LA are testaments of the usefulness of incentives for commercial retail development uh, that brings food access to neighborhoods in desperate needs. These are success stories that offer a glimmer of hope, but we need a more systemic approach to influence national and regional grocers to do, gro to do business in every corner of the city where there is a need. These incentives are important and are a necessary tool that the city has in its arsenal, and we believe the city should also introduce a city-wide policy that establishes basic standards for grocery operations in Los Angeles. The problems of declining uh, job quality and the lack of, a of, of, of adequate food access will not be solved by incentives alone. In the aftermath of the civil unrest in 1992, the grocery industry made commitments to build 34 new supermarkets throughout the riot impacted areas. Almost 18 years later, a review by the Urban Environmental Policy Institute at Occidental College found that there was a net gain, and this is 2007, of two markets. Today, it's zero. The problem is the industry has made strategic business decisions to operate outside of LA's inner city neighborhoods. Only the city has the ability to influence this vital industry and to change the equation of their business models. This is what we want to present to you today, ask you um, to advance the conversation, and we appreciate what has been done, but we look forward to more being done. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend. Thank you, sir. Our next speaker will be Cheryl Resnick. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Dr. Cheryl Resnick. I'm a physical therapist, and I'm an assistant professor at USC in the Division of Biokinesiology and Physical Therapy. And my third hat is I'm the director of community outreach. In 2005, we created and we continue to run a pro bono clinic called Fit Families that's geared towards kids 10 to 17 and their parents who are at risk for developing diabetes and other chronic diseases that are related to lack of physical activity. Um, this was created because of the epidemic we have of morbidly obese kids. Since our founding, we've worked with over 100 families and 250 individuals, and it's really kind of a heartbreaking situation. 
Children in East LA and other low-income communities aren't getting enough physical activity for a myriad of reasons, but it's equally clear that they don't have access to good and healthy food. Part of this is related to family habits and economics, but a, a larger part is that there isn't access to health, healthy food. On a quantitative level, hospital costs related to childhood obesity in the United States have tripled over the last 30 years. Overall, poor diet and physical inactivity were ranked as the second highest actual cause of death in the United States in 2000. So while heart disease and hypertension might have been the, the cause of death, it was related to obesity and inactivity. On an anecdotal level, I can give you a real picture of what this looks like. When we do an intake on our families for our clinic, we weigh them. We were um, unable to weigh three kids because their weight was in excess of 250 pounds, which is the limit of our scale. And so we had to use funds to buy a scale that went up to 500 pounds so that we could take care of our community. This is a pretty heartbreaking situation. This city, like so many others, is watching an epidemic happen with kids in low-income food desert communities. I work next to Ramona Gardens in uh, Councilmember Huizar's district, and there is one grocery store within that neighborhood. And I am not exaggerating when I tell you that when I cruise through that grocery store, that the things that I saw on the shelves are the stuff that I throw away, if that's what they look like in my refrigerator. And this is all they have in easy walking distance to the community. They don't have enough healthy food options, and it's really going to be um, a dramatic effect on the city when we don't have a healthy workforce. We're just beginning to see long-term effects of the obesity crisis with increasing health costs, and I'm here today because I believe we can turn this around. We need a city government to adopt a policy that will prioritize the expansion and growth of grocery stores in our communities where they're needed most. I live in Pasadena. I have two major grocery stores within one mile of my house and seven total within two and a half miles. And I'm kind of astounded that the community that I spend my day with doesn't have nearly the access that I do. I think this is a matter of community health and it really needs to be a priority for our city. And I really hope that you'll take some steps to make this a reality. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Resnick. Thank you for your observations. Um, at times when the elected officials speak on the issue, um, it is viewed as a, a political agenda when, in fact, it's a health agenda. It's, a, it's, a, it's a, an agenda that deals with the uh, condition of our, of our young people. So thank you for that. Good afternoon. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Amanda Schaefer, and I'm here on behalf of the Urban and Environmental Policy Institute at Occidental College at 1600 Campus Road, 90041. Um, and UEPI is urging the city to exercise its land use authority to close the grocery divide by requiring the industry to locate quality stores in all communities to offer healthy food choices and living wage jobs and to operate sustainably. Our institute has researched best practices in the food retail industry in the areas of food access, transportation, sustainability, and jobs. And while voluntary industry actions and financial incentives go part of the way towards improving access and services, smart regulation is needed to ensure that all residents are going to benefit from healthy sources of food and quality jobs. So we've investigated the grocery gap in LA through data analysis and community food assessments for many years now and have found that the residents of low-income areas are living in food environments with significantly fewer grocery stores per capita than more affluent parts of the city. And as we've heard, this disparity means a lack of access to fresh foods, creating a significant human cost in terms of health impacts. Uh, these challenges are the direct result of the failure of the industry to open and underserved neighborhoods, despite dense populations with considerable spending power available to support such businesses. A 2008 Los Angeles Neighborhood Drill Down report by Social Compact illustrated that $113 million in grocery sales leak out of just nine um, underserved LA neighborhoods. So raising job quality standards across the industry is also critical to stimulate economic development in these underserved neighborhoods and to ensure that more families can afford to buy the fresh, healthy food. 
Um, Rodina Associates' study of the grocery industry impacts on the LA economy estimated that increasing grocery wages by $4,400 on an annual basis would generate $62 million in additional spending in the surrounding low-income communities. So we really applaud the efforts of the Community Redevelopment Agency's Market Opportunities Program and the Mayor's Fresh Foods Task Force as a move in the dire right direction. But we still think that the city needs to undertake a systematic urban planning approach to addressing the geographic disparity created by grocery industry abandonment. So we believe that the city should create a conditional use permit to establish standards for a healthy grocery environment and that by evaluating a chain's site location and operations, taking to in, into account whether the store is adopting innovative programs to increase access to healthy foods. The city can encourage retailers to build quality supermarkets in underserved neighborhoods, transform the food environment, and be responsible to employers. This, and, and be responsible employers. This will have the long-term effect of establishing good standards in an industry that is critical to the physical and economic health of its residents. Thanks. Thank you so much. Well, Kathy Finn. Good afternoon, council members. My name is Kathy Finn. I am the director of collective bargaining for the United Food and Commercial Workers Union, Local 770. We're located at 630 South Chateau Place in Los Angeles, 90005. I'm also a native um, Los Angelino. On behalf of our 35,000 members who live and work in and around the Los Angeles area, we petition this committee to develop a conditional use permit process for grocery store development that would ensure that supermarket expansion is distributed e equitably throughout the city and provide middle class jobs and standard environmental protections for all communities within the city. In many communities, grocery stores are a major provider of helpful foods for residents. Grocery stores also stimulate economic development on a neighborhood level, but this does not occur equally in all neighborhoods. In some areas of Los Angeles, grocery stores have abandoned certain neighborhoods completely, leaving residents with very few places to buy food and hindering e efforts to stimulate economic development. Evidence of the economic harm caused by the flight of high-quality grocery stores from certain areas can be seen in worker wages. According to the California Economic Development Department, which collects employment data, the average grocery worker in East Los Angeles earns just under $23,000 a year, while an average grocery worker in West Los Angeles earns almost $31,000 per year. The West LA grocery worker is earning almost 35% more than the East LA grocery worker, and that's a difference of almost $8,000 a year. And the story is the same in other underserved parts of Los Angeles. Workers in South Los Angeles are, are earning as much as $7,300 less than those in West LA, and even in the Northeast San Fernando Valley, where, where there are considerably more stores, workers are earning $7,000 less than their counterparts in West Los Angeles. The California Budget Project estimates that a single person needs to earn $28,126 a year to be self-sufficient. Accordingly, the only grocery workers who earn enough to be self-sufficient are those who work at stores in West Los Angeles. Workers at stores in neighborhoods with fewer grocery stores and lower quality stores do not earn enough to be self-sufficient. The grocery stores that do exist in the underserved communities rarely adhere to the wage and benefit standards that exist at the larger chains. In addition, grocery workers at the smaller chains and other independent grocers often lack affordable health care, forcing some to rely on public assistance or delay care until emergency treatment is needed. This jeopardizes their health and overburdens the public health system. Maintaining high standards for grocery workers is a key element in the effort to spur economic development in low-income communities. Raising job quality standards for grocery workers across the city will raise living standards for workers living in neighborhoods targeted for redevelopment. The city of Los Angeles cannot hope to create real economic development if it allows standards in the grocery industry to decline or continues to allow some neighborhoods to receive economic and health benefits from quality grocery stores while other communities do not have access to the same benefits. The grocery industry is too critical to the economic and physical health of Los Angeles residents in all of our neighborhoods for the city leaders not to take action. Council members, I thank you for your time. 
Thank you, ma'am. Elliot Petty. Good afternoon. I'm Elliot Petty, uh, Director of Retail Projects at the Los Angeles Alliance for a New Economy. Uh, a member of the Alliance for Healthy and Responsible Grocery Stores, which consists of community, faith-based, and environmental organizations throughout Los Angeles. Uh, Councilmember Boreas, we certainly thank you for taking up this critical issue and respectfully call on the city to pass a grocery investment policy uh, which, in which the city can use its land use authority to influence the grocery industry expansion into the food deserts of Los Angeles. Uh, through such a policy, the city should designate specific areas of the city that are underserved by food service markets. Uh, designate them as food priority districts, where all grocers seeking to expand anywhere in the city should be encouraged uh, and supported to invest there first. Uh, such a policy should require all grocery chains uh, seeking to open a new store or to upgrade or renovate an existing store uh, to obtain a conditional use permit or some other form of uh, landatory control, land use uh, control. Uh, we believe that this policy should apply to, this permit should apply to all grocery chains that propose to operate uh, stores that are 10,000 square feet or larger with exemptions for the true mom and pop uh, operations. Uh, to obtain the permit, the grocer should be evaluated, uh, perhaps on a point system, of evaluate the, the, the grocers on three key areas, where stores are located in the city, the variety and the variety of health foods that they're providing in those areas. Uh, they should also look at the wage and benefits and conditions for workers, and then also look at uh, com community and environmental issues. Uh, by evaluating a retailer's operation performance, uh, this policy could discourage the redlining practices of the industry uh, that are dividing the city of, of Los Angeles into food haves and food have nots. Uh, gross Groceries proposing to invest in food priority areas should be preferred uh, by the city uh, through an evaluation tool. Uh, there should be a preference in terms of, in the form of financial and zoning incentives. Uh, and essentially, we believe that there should be expedited uh, permitting for uh, grocers looking to uh, locate into underserved uh, neighborhoods. Um, let me also say or, or point out uh, that what we would propose is, is not that far off from what many cities across the country uh, are looking at. Everyone looks at, uh, everyone wants to figure out what's the correct mix of incentives, but we argue that you have to go a step further and have, have a systematic program that would encourage them to invest in the communities where we need uh, good grocery uh, the most. Uh, the City of New York recently passed a uh, NYC uh, FRESH program, um, which offers a mix of uh, financial and zoning incentives. Uh, they also look at uh, their financial incentives include real estate tax abatements, tax exemptions on materials used to construct, renovate, or equip the grocery stores. Uh, they have zoning laws uh, are revised to allow residential developers to build slightly bigger buildings that include space for neighborhood grocers on the ground floor. Um, and all of their incentives are targeted in four Pacific neighborhoods of the city of New York. Uh, and they also have certain requirements. They make them uh, apply for a permit. Uh, they make them go before a planning body. There's a public hearing. Uh, they require all those stores to, uh, to uh, accept EBT food stamps and WIC programs. Uh, they also look at their labor practices, and um, they make sure that all of them go through a public process. Um, so we certainly support this motion and look forward to working further with you. Thank you. Well, thank you, Mr. Petty. And again, thank you for your hard work. I know you've been working on this for a while, so I appreciate all your efforts. We have Nat Natividad Felix. After Natividad, we'll have Frank. And I believe it's... Tambor Tamboreo. So, Natividad, please. Go with Natividad first. Oh, yeah. Where? Can I translate for Nati? Sure. Okay. Okay. Buenas tardes. Es, es, uh, es un nombre, nombre muy es... propio para Navidad, ¿verdad? Natividad? Yeah. Okay. 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 Felicidades. Mi nombre es Natividad Félix. Uh, mi dirección es 2867. Lancaster Avenida, uh, apartamento 233 en Los Ángeles, California, en Ramona Gardens. 2867 Lancaster Avenue in uh, Ramona Gardens here in Los Angeles. Yo soy líder de Santa Teresita, soy líder de Ellie Boys en Santa Teresita. Uh, Ellie Boys es una organización no, no lucrativa que trabaja en 24 congregaciones en Los Ángeles. Ellie Boys es parte de la red nacional PICO. 
con organizaciones en 18 estados y 150 ciudades. I'm a leader at Santa Teresita Church and, at LA, and in LA Voice. LA Voice is a nonprofit organization working in 24 congregations in Los Angeles and is also part of the Pico National Network with organizations in 18 states and 150 cities. El motivo que yo estoy aquí es por la gran necesidad que hay en nuestra comunidad que es mercados saludables económicos y cercas en nuestra área. The reason that I'm here today is for the great need that there is in our community to have healthy markets uh, that are affordable and close to our area. Como verán, yo soy madre soltera de seis hijos y no les estoy dando una buena nutrición constante a mis hijos porque no hay supermercados cercas. You see, I'm a single mother with six children and I'm not giving my children uh, good nutrition constant, uh, on a regular basis uh, because there aren't healthy supermarkets close to where we live. Y la que hay tenemos que irnos en bus y regresar en el ven del, del supermercado y solo circula un bus, solo lleva tres o cuatro familias y se tarda mucho. The supermarket that does exist, we have to go in the bus and come back on a shuttle from the supermarket that only can carry three or four families, and it takes a very long time. Y por ese motivo yo voy cada 15 días al supermercado, pero si hubiera una cercana sería más fácil para, para alimentar a mis, a mis hijos. So as it is, I just go to the supermarket every 15 days, and if there were uh, more close by, it would be easier to keep my family healthy. Y como yo, hay muchas familias de muy bajos recursos y sin transportación. A mí me gustaría que nos ayudaran para tener un supermercado en nuestra comunidad. Por favor, es muy necesario. <coughs> Se los pido en el nombre de mis hijos y de todas las familias necesitadas. And there are many families of low income and without transportation in my community. And I would like it if you would help us to have a, supermar uh, to have a supermarket in our area. I, it's very necessary and I ask it in the name of my children and all the other families. Gracias. Thank you very much. Thank you for taking the time. Next speaker. Good afternoon. I'm Frank Tamborello representing Hunger Action Los Angeles. Our headquarters are at 961 South Mariposa Avenue, number 205, LA 90006. We represent about 25 organizations fighting to end hunger and promote healthy eating in LA. This past May, we brought about 200 people to City Hall for Hunger Action Day, to which uh, Council Member Weezar responded by sponsoring our uh, motion for the city to donate its surplus food. One of our other demands was for healthy grocery stores in the neighborhoods, and we think that this is the motion that uh, may lead to that. Um, there's been a chronic problem, as has been mentioned by the other speakers, since uh, 1992, and for many people even further than that. But especially now, the recession is causing many people to eat poorly. People are choosing cheap and filling foods that are calorie rich, but nutrient poor. Right now in LA, 25% of our kids are in poverty, and about 740,000 adults Find, find it hard to uh, put a meal on the table each day. Well, we all know that our neighborhoods need more mangoes and less McDonald's, more berries and less Burger Kings, and more kale and less KFC. So um, we hope that this is uh, the avenue to doing that. There's as much purchasing power in South LA as there is in Beverly Hills. So we know that uh, there's, there's really no reason for the stores not to, not to come into these neighborhoods. We're hoping that um, the standards that are proposed, combined with some smart incentives, will make LA both a business-free, I'm sorry, a business-friendly, a worker-friendly, and a consumer-friendly city. So uh, we support the motion and hope that you, you're able to construct an ordinance along those lines. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the time. And later, and our final speaker is Jonathan, Jonathan Matz. Good afternoon, my name is Annie Liner. I'm a member of ICAR, which is a synagogue in Los Angeles that counts 400 families as members. We're located at 5870 West Olympic Boulevard. We're also, as ICAR, a member of LA Voice, which works in 24 churches and synagogues in the Los Angeles area. 
Most of us at ECAR are blessed to live in neighborhoods where there's actually a variety of healthy and fresh grocery options. But as you've heard from um, others who have spoken before me today, that that's not the case for many people in Los Angeles. A group of us from ECAR just went on a bus tour in Boyle Heights, and we met with a group of mothers in Ramona Gardens who had to travel over two hours by bus in order to feed their families. We at ECAR believe that this situation is unacceptable. The ability to nourish oneself and one's family, which is a human right, should not depend on the zip code in which you were born. So um, we urge you to take action on this, and thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Jonathan Matz. Hello, my name is Jonathan Matz, and I represent the Progressive Jewish Alliance. Our office is located at 5870 West Olympic Boulevard. That's in Los Angeles, uh, 90036. We uh, recently joined the effort to change grocery policies here in Los Angeles, um, and I also come to you to speak today um, and urge your uh, support for a city policy which would um, reinvest current food deserts with healthy grocery stores and uh, the, the jobs that come, the, the quality union jobs that come with them. Um, right now, we're in the midst of Hanukkah, which is a period of eight days during which uh, we eat fried potatoes um, and jelly donuts, and it's delicious for eight days. Um, but we get to stop, and we have more options for cuisine when that happens. When our members recently participated in the same tour that my friend Annie just mentioned, we got to thinking about what it would be like if, in fact, those fried potatoes and, and sugary foods were all that you had access to over the course of a year. And in fact, one of the same mothers that Annie mentioned gave us the answer. Her kids stay up at night with stomach aches because of the lack of nutrition in the food that she has to provide for them. This is unacceptable in a city of our size, in a city that likes to think of itself as leading the way for urban policy in the 21st century, both here in the United States and internationally. Um, and we at the Progressive Jewish Alliance urge the city council to do something about it. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Colleagues, that uh, culminates the public comment period. And again, this will be a directive that we'll be uh, forwarding to our respective departments. But the emphasis here essentially is how can the city get more involved in using its influence so that the industry expansion and growth actually occurs in underserved areas. And this is the type of challenge that is in front of us. Uh, we know, at least I am very much aware of the fact that I have certain census tracts. We have up to 70,000 people per square mile. So from a mainstream uh, demographic analytical point of view, they see the high poverty rates What's not being calculated is the volume of dollars existing in one area, which I believe is an incentive for those who would want to make business and generate business in these areas that, for whatever reason, have been redlined by mainstream supermarkets. I do know we have to establish a nexus. There has to be a, a legal way in which we can approach this issue, and that would be essentially that challenge in front of us and how do we incorporate standards that generates and actually identifies a quality grocery store, meaning healthy foods, um, the good paying jobs. I know we can't legislate that, but it's something that we could uh, identify in terms of our um, incentives and how we look at this, this nexus of, of federal, state, and local resources, if any, at this time. Uh, and also to promote sustainable facilities. So it is our challenge to figure out the right mix of financial and entitlement incentives for groceries locating in underserved areas and to actually create those magnets that would draw them in uh, has been presented in our presentation today. After the riots, uh, there were commitments made that were never fulfilled uh, and there is a much great need and today, now more than ever, I think we should be proactive. Uh, as someone mentioned today in another conversation, uh, we can't waste a crisis. In other words, let's take advantage of this time now and see how we can uh, stimulate, look at different 
uh, strategies and bringing forth uh, a policy that allows us to address this, this real need. Um, any comments from my colleagues before I make the recommendation for committee action? Well, I, I look at the insurance companies that redline. I look at uh, hospitals that don't exist. I look at department stores that don't exist. And I look at an area of the city that's part of the greater city of Los Angeles that's been neglected for a long period of time. I can remember then there was Newton Dairy Farm. Um, I can remember Jersey Maiden on Slauson near maybe Figueroa. And I can remember the, uh, the businesses that were down there that have left. And with them left most of the jobs and it did not turn into a positive environment. And I think with the community development money, what the state hasn't taken away, and what the obligation and responsibility of corporate America reminds me of what President Obama was doing yesterday with the Wall Street, the fat cats from Wall Street, trying to convince them that they have a responsibility. Uh, the same responsibility rests with the big chains. Kroger now owns Ralph's. Safeway is actually Vons and Pavilion. And you look at some of the other stores, Superior, Vallarta, Johns, some of the independents that exist, that don't exist in certain parts of the city. And basically what they're doing is redlining an area of the city of Los Angeles. Whether it's for economic reasons or other reasons, they're just not there. And a mom of six children has to feed those children, has to travel great distances. And I don't know how many of you have gone down to the southern part of the city, but there's between downtown Los Angeles, has been mentioned on 9th Street where they built a Rouse, part of the CRA project, and then you get past South LA into Wilmington, Harbor City, where you have again the markets, the stores, but there's that big gap. It's like the bridge that doesn't exist. And I think that it's incumbent upon us what we can do. We obviously can't force them to go down there, maybe incentives to establish some markets, some better quality of life for the folks down there that deserve that. But it's been a long period of time that they've been without that. And whether it's the 1992 riot, but we know the hospital was promised, built, and closed because of inefficiency. And now it's going to be reopened thanks to the County of Los Angeles. But I'm kind of surprised it's taken so long to get to this point where people are now calling for something to take place in that part of the city. I represent the Southwest San Fernando Valley, Woodland Hills, Tarzana, West Hills, where we've got country clubs and golf courses. And people enjoy the country clubs and golf courses. And there's other parts of the city where they don't even have a park, leave alone a supermarket for the basic necessities of life. So. Uh, I support that we do whatever we can do, and I think it's an example of the haves and the have-nots and a clear reflection of haves and have-nots and clearly parts of the city that are redlined. And that's something that in this society, the city of the angels, it should not tolerate. So I'm totally on board to support this, and hopefully we can make something happen sooner than later for the people of that part of the city of Los Angeles, which is one city that's not divided between the valley and Hollywood and the east part and the west part and the south part, but one city where we're supposed to join together and make it better for everyone. So you got my support, Council Member Reyes. Thank you, Thank you Council Member Zion, Council Member Wiesar. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I think what you're going to do is send this uh, to staff to further analyze and come back and make recommendations to the committee? Yes. Yes, that's your, your goal here? Your yeah, goal. the goal would be to um, forward this motion to council and instruct the city attorney and the planning department, coordinating with the CRA and other relevant city departments to draft an ordinance. This is wishful thinking given our staffing issues with the 90 days including various recommendations in the motion. In the motion, we speak to consider recommendations on 
the feasibility of enacting appropriate permitting and land use regulatory controls for grocery stores to address public safety concerns, provide quality and healthful amenities to the public, and maintain the quality of life standards in communities where they are located and propose to be located. The recommendation should also explore further incentives for retail grocery stores which meet high community standards and that facilitate the locations in underserved neighborhoods as well as a streamlined entitlement process based on set standards. Okay, good. Thank you, and I certainly support this. I um, live not too far away from Ramona Gardens where one of the uh, women mentioned the difficulty in getting to a local grocery store. Um, I, I would request, however, that we include a conversation with the industry um, because in my efforts, without us even having some city intervention from a policy level, I've uh, initiated conversations with several of the chain supermarkets asking them, why don't you come to these neighborhoods? And I mean, just this just anecdotal conversation, nothing based on data or anything, but they mentioned that they want to. They've recognized the buying power that exists, that the density in these places does lend itself to uh, have them be profitable. But they do mention that they do not have a suitable location, and that density itself does not allow them to have the available site area to be able to locate there. Whether true or not, uh, I think whatever we get back, it'd be a worthwhile discussion with the industry so that we hear from them as well, because they're at least telling me that they want to locate there, they just can't find a site. So whatever it is that we do on the regulatory side and the incentives we provide, um, I hope that it's really getting to the crux of what the problem is and really targeting that from the industry side as to why aren't they coming to these neighborhoods. So we're really targeted and focused on that um, as to why they're not. And you know, in my view, I've directed some of those supermarkets, well, what about this site? What about that site? And they always come back with some reason or other why it's not a simple site. So you know, we narrow down on, on what is it the best ways that we could incentivize them to come in on top of the other recommendations that were mentioned here, I think that will really go a long way. Um, but if the issue is there's a need and lack of service, fresh fruit and vegetables, um, et cetera, um, and on the other hand, we have an industry that wants to do that and wants to work collaboratively with labor to make that happen, then it's up to us as a city to, to help that make that happen. And I think that this, that's why this is so, so important. And I think it's going about it the right way, but we do need the industry involved in this as well so that we're making sure we're talking apples and apples to talk about fruit, right? <laughs> so thank you. And, and this, uh, um, you know, the speakers mentioned it. It's, it's a, a national epidemic that we're seeing with unhealthy young children that we are not only paying in terms of young people's lives and health, but the future economic costs are going to be tremendous to this city and to this nation if we do not address this now. Uh, we've been talking about it for several years, and one of the best ways we as a city could address this is to, along with encouraging youth sports programs and exercise in our parks and allowing them to have that adequate green space in their neighborhoods is to uh, attack it from what they're actually eating and this is going to go a long way to addressing that so thank you to the advocates i hope you stay involved because this is at the cutting edge of getting to addressing a number of issues in low-income communities health economics equity and a number of other issues so thank you so much thank you Councilman Councilman Zion. I can share with you in the uh, work that I've been able to engage in District 1, uh, we as a city were proactive in actually identifying, for example, uh, two square block area off of 6th Street and uh, Union and uh, I believe it's uh, off of uh, uh, Westlake. And literally we were told there is no way any supermarket would want to go in there. There's just not enough room. There's not enough places. We found there was a uh, square block of uh, hotels that were abandoned, that were rears in their uh, property taxes that essentially were a blighting condition. 
And with the CRA, we were able to assemble those parcels, uh, invite uh, various investors. And it's sad for me to say that the majority of the investors came from other countries. They did not come from the United States. And we were able to package uh, a layout in which we have a food for less, a Home Depot, and one of the most lucrative centers uh, in an area that has been redlined because of high poverty. Uh, there's this term the industry uses, they call it leakage. And I asked the guy, well, what do you mean by leakage? He, well, what he was suddenly saying is that people steal too much from that area, therefore they don't want the store to go there. And I said, well, how, what did you base that on? And they were on very generic uh, standards that were borderline, uh, I don't want to use the word, but it was just a very, uh, yeah, it was, just, it was just a comment that was, uh, <laughs> but uh, it was very uh, unsettling. So I think we as a city uh, also could be more proactive in creating environments for this investment. And that's what I'm hoping uh, our departments will be able to do. And uh, the, your comments, Council we Star and Zion does, um, uh, we can add to instruct the city staff to consider various stakeholder input before final recommendations and ordinance uh, are drafted and to report back for the status in 60 days. Again, I know it's the holidays, and we have a lot on our plate, uh, but we need to start moving in this direction. Uh, but the bottom line is we do need the industry to be a partner in this, and we have to figure out how we can uh, make this happen. So Council that would member, be the, oh, yes. Excuse me, Council Member Reyes, Terry Kaufman, Messias City Attorney's Office. Could you amend that to um, send this to the planning department, and then the planning department will consult with the city attorney. Okay, that would be the direction then. Anything else, Roberta, I should include? I think it's uh, in the kitchen sink. I think that covers it, unless you want to throw in the CRA in there. Yes. I think did. you already did. I think you did. Yes, we did include the CRA. So that being the action, I see, yes, sir. In addition to CRA, if there's any other federal, state, or county opportunities for inclusion and investment in the endeavor that we are pursuing. There may be some enterprise, there okay. may be some, whatever there is, we, if we could tap into it, if it exists. So for federal and state resources. Shovel ready, stimulus funds, whatever. Okay. We'll add that to the directive and um, that'll be the actions committee, unanimous vote. And uh, again, I thank you and we look forward to working with the staff and putting something together. Uh, that being said, um, I believe that covers all the items. Uh, uh, anybody here public, for public comment? Seeing none, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. Where's the map? Where's the map? Oh, upstairs. Go upstairs? Yeah. You want to go see the map? Um, you want to go see Before the map? Tomorrow, so you don't have to spend two hours tomorrow with us. Analyzing it? Hey, did they just pass an ordinance on toilets?